Okay, uh, it's time. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rachit. Uh, oh, it's on. Okay. So my name is Rachit. I work for IBM Software Labs, Bangalore. And today, uh, I'm here to present a session on creating multi-node Hadoop cluster uh, using Docker containers in within four minutes. Four minutes is our average time. Like, usually, we get it clusters in two minutes also, and sometimes around six minutes. And uh, what I am, I am not a system developer. I am a, a software developer, which, uh, like, we are using container technologies. We are not, uh, not developing them. Uh, so I am here uh, as a user of the technologies like uh, you might be hearing uh, in this conference for a while now. So uh, what we do in, uh, here is that we provide various services on cloud, and we build those services. And we, um, uh, we use Bluemix as our marketplace, where, uh, where, where you will find a lot of services there. And uh, this is one of their services, which is uh, Big Insights on Cloud. Is there one of these services? And uh, so we're, I'm very excited to talk about like how we are able to achieve this uh, within this much time using Docker containers. So uh, basically, what what we have here is like a big monolithic application, which we first containerized it, and uh, and 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 build service around it, and. Uh, and I'll, I'll first touch upon like what are the uh, why we such need such kind of a cluster in such short period of time. Like what my customers were asking. Like what were their needs, and why, uh, and how we are able to do this. Uh, so that's going to be my agenda of my talk. So uh, let's uh, first put like uh, our, like in, as a who are my customers? My customers are like data scientists who want to run analytic jobs. And they want to uh, do a lot of like, uh, like high queries. They want to run their Spark jobs. They want to uh, run their R scripts. So they are just like data scientists. They are more bothered about their algorithms, their data models. They are not bothered about the clustering technology. Or they are not bothering about how I am going to config my cluster. Uh, basically, they are looking for Hadoop cluster or, uh, uh, or a runtime where they can just submit their jobs, and, and 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 it's their wish. Like, can I get a Hadoop cluster on demand? I don't want to like sit and learn the installation. I don't want to configure it. I don't want to uh, like uh, uh, spend my time setting up those clusters. So. Let's say we they get the clusters from various providers. Now the problem is like they need upgrades. They need to maintain those clusters. They 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 want they they need to monitor the health of those clusters. So they they don't have the time and energy to spend a lot in like uh, oh I need to patch it now. I I'm I, that service has gone down. How I how how should I bring it up? And and like, and they also want to scale and descale depending on the load. Sometimes they they would they would they are okay working with five node cluster, but sometimes they need a twenty or a thirty node cluster. So these are their requirements, but they are not able to manage it. So uh, just taking their requirements in, what what we understood from them, what they are looking for is a multi node Hadoop cluster, and they want elasticity. Like they want to uh, grow and shrink in size on demand. They uh, they want it economical. It should not be like they have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for the clusters, and they want it fully managed. Like I'm not bothered about patching. I'm not bothered about uh, upgrades. You do it for on my behalf. They want these clusters to be repeatable. Like and whenever they request, it should come in a consistent time. Uh, it, it's not like they have to wait for days or a full uh, day. I'm done with my analytic jobs. I want to run it. I, I can't wait for a day to see the result, just to have the cluster ready. And they want minimum uh, disruptions uh, during the patching. Uh, it's, it's not like we are down, have a lo lot of downtimes. We need to have 99 availability. 
And they are also looking something like uh, service composition. Like we may offer a lot of services. Like they, they are more, if they are more into Spark jobs, they would opt for the Spark service. If they are uh, interested in uh, pick queries, they will opt for the pick queries. Else, they can cho choose to omit those services. So, what it takes basically to have a cluster setup? First, you need to have uh, like machines, uh, right set of machines. Once you have those machines ordered either from your cloud infrastructure or in your on-prem, you, you need to prepare those machines. Like uh, for a Hadoop cluster to work, it requires a lot of kernel settings, it requires the disk to be prepared, uh, it, uh, partitions to be done, uh, networks to be laid on, and we create new uh, like various networks, like a private network for my cluster, a public network to access it from outside, secure those networks, uh, then basically start the install installation of the Hadoop, uh, prepare a blueprint or a configuration, like what are my uh, he uh, heap size going to be, uh, what, uh, how many nodes I want, how, many, uh, uh, how much memory I'm going to give to my YARN sch scheduler jobs, how I'm going to configure my MapReduce. And once that is ready, uh, then they start installation, and many a times installation fails. Main reason being, uh, the environment is not consistent always. Let me just give you one brief example. Like prior to our uh, experience with the container technology, there used to be like uh, uh, we, we order our machines from our cloud provider, and they were supposed to give us, uh, let's say, RHL 6.7. But somebody ran yum update, and the OS uh, moved to 6.8. And basically, our applications start complaining, and it failed to install. And we had a downtime at the, in the production. So uh, that really impacts uh, us and our customers. So we need environment to be consistent and, uh, so that uh, installation succeeds all the time. So uh, we have now this kind of service available already, which is based on containers and we are exposing it through Bluemix. So those who don't know about Bluemix, Bluemix is a cloud platform which we are providing as a service, and it's developed by IBM. And it supports various, various several languages and services, and it's integrated with DevOps to build, deploy, manage uh, your applications on cloud. And uh, uh, it has a lot of services available for you, and it, basically, you can access uh, a range of services not only from IBM, but from other vendors also who deploy their services on Bluemix. And uh, there are uh, runtimes also available for you, like there are runtimes like Node.js, Java, Python. And there are various services which you can integrate and have your end-to-end -end solution. There are services like Cloud and DB, or uh, there are services like Watson uh, APIs, which you can leverage for your uh, machine learning uh, 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 related uh, uh, related programs. And for a developer, uh, basically Bluemix provides an uh, environment where you can, on a single click, uh, create those services, create those apps, and get started with your uh, business part. Uh, run your algos. Okay, so uh, we also have this service on Bluemix, which is called as Big Insights on Cloud, which provides uh, such clusters for you, Hadoop clusters. So I'm, I, what I'm going to show you is, you like, I'll start the creation of this cluster. We'll we'll see uh, what it takes to create a cluster on Bluemix, and I'm going to log into. This is the Bluemix landing page, like. Uh, and um, I'll log in now. So I'll basically give the request, and it cluster should be ready in a few minutes' time. So we'll see uh, uh, what, what it takes now to have a cluster now. So the Bluemix, as I said, it has a lot of services. So this is our big insights on cloud service. And I have provisioned one instance of this. And uh, once I open this instance, it will basically take me to the landing page for my service. And uh, then I'll open the, uh, what we call it as a cluster manager page for us, where we, you can see your list of clusters which you have created. 
and you can request for new cluster. I'll just give a name. Uh, and then I need to provide the username which I'm going to use for uh, accessing my cluster and password for it. And then I can basically tell information like how many data nodes I need. Uh, I'll just say I need two nodes. And you can, uh, we, we support various versions of uh, like our offering. Uh, I'll choose one of them. So this is where I was talking about the service composition. Like user can choose which services they want on their cluster and what they don't want. There are some mandatory service which we uh, like have the base like it's like HBase, HDFS, which we provide as a base. And then they can choose like uh, optional services like Spark or Uzi or Flume. And there are many more services depending upon the uh, platform they choose. If they choose to have value add platform from IBM, we'll provide text analytics, uh, Big SQL, uh, and various other services to, for your users. So I have given the request for the cluster creation. And it should be ready in a few minutes. As you can see, it's in the preparing state. So meanwhile, I'll, I'll talk about how, how we are able to uh, do what we are doing. So, uh, to begin further, I would like to share some stats with you guys, like uh, uh, what was the timings which used to take uh, creation of this cluster previously, and uh, what are the timings we, uh, we are able to create now. Let's say if you are ordering machines and you have bare metals ordered, you need to create a cluster. It will take you about three to four days to have a cluster ready because you need to uh, uh, like prepare those machines, check the configs, prepare the, uh, get all the prereqs right. Uh, and let's say if you even have those configs done, then it takes about one hour time to uh, just to run the installation. Because installation will do a lot of uh, yum install Hadoop, it will set up a database, and, and it takes time to uh, installation to complete. And with containers coming in, specifically Docker containers, uh, like uh, we are able to do it in minutes. Uh, like, and uh, we are able to, cluster is ready in two minutes and it takes about two to three minutes to start all the services which we have opted for in our cluster. So uh, before moving to the container technology, we experimented a lot on other technologies. Like we started with bare metals, we had our, our uh, basic offering was from using Chef as our configuration management, who were, we had written a lot of recipes for Chef, which was like preparing our machines, we are preparing our uh, 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 disks and then making it ready. Uh, problem with uh, this kind of approach was like the environment was not always consistent as I uh, given you example earlier, like sometimes uh, whenever you do a yum update, the version changes and we have to see the heat uh, of those impacts in our production environment. Then we basically started exploring, like let's say we have a pre-configured environment somewhere, can we take a snapshot of that environment and replay it uh, in our production environments? So we started exploring around uh, the uh, various imaging techniques XCAT is the one of the uh, 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 cluster and the uh, cloud administration toolkit, which basically uh, uh, comes up with the various management techniques for clusters, grids, and uh, it's very agile, And but it, uh, it also has some imaging techniques available. Uh, only problem using XCAT was like we have to manage a lot of stuff to uh, uh, get our clusters ready. So we also explored various cloud-specific uh, pro providers imaging techniques, like let's say AWS, software, have their own Im imaging techniques available. That works fine. Uh, only uh, hurdle there is like if you want to be ag cloud agnostic, you, uh, you, you may not want to go that route. So if, if let's say you are offering now on AWS, you want to offer on other public clouds. 
uh, that technique will not go, uh, work well. And even if you want to scale it to a kind of solution for private cloud, that, that technique uh, may not work well. So we, based on our experiments, we came up various guiding principles for us. Like we want virtualization, we want imaging, uh, but what are the solutions available? It sh uh, that solution should be easy to maintain. It should not be like uh, I'm, I'm, I have written a very good solution, but it's very difficult to patch my existing clusters. Uh, it should be performant. Uh, are like being an enterprise ready clusters, it should be performance should be near to bare metal performance. We should not see the let's say 30 to 40 percent degradation, even 10 percent degradation is not acceptable. Uh, we we, uh, we uh, like we don't want to write a lot of code on ours, like it will be like for then time to market would be very slow for us. We want to use whatever what is available for in open source. And it should be cloud agnostic. We, basically, we want our presence on all public clouds, and we want our solution to work even on private clouds. So keeping all that thing in mind, we started exploring containers uh, two years back. And uh, that was like Docker was just uh, in its initial stages. Uh, I, I basically uh, uh, started exploring from the imaging side first. Uh, as Docker, like as a uh, bundle pack, uh, who can replay uh, the same infrastructure which I have in my dev or tested environment to production ready uh, things. Uh, and when I ran my first Docker run command, it was like magic for me. I couldn't believe like it's starting in uh, so, uh, so less time. So, so we started exploring around containers. We, uh, we, 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 uh, we were first of mindset, like we are comparing them with VMs. Uh, so we started uh, asking us questions like, we have containers now. How do I maintain, uh, how, 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 how can I back up my containers? Like I want to, uh, uh, I don't want to, uh, uh, my customers to lose their data. Where should I keep my data? Should I keep it inside the container? If a container dies, the data will be gone. So uh, how do I network those containers in a multi-host networking kind of a thing? Because uh, uh, two years back or one hour, one hour years back, the multi-node host networking was not available as smoothly as it is now. So we uh, explored a lot of options using open vSwitch, using LXC commands to have uh, networking in place and, and, and basically get answers to our, all our questions. And then we uh, arrived at questions like uh, data should be externalized to the containers. We should not put inside the containers my customer data because containers will uh, uh, come and go. And uh, uh, we should uh, have some play, uh, uh, and, uh, and we should be able to handle the restarts of the host machines because uh, as a cloud provider, somebody can just put the plug off and it should not be like, uh, okay, now host machine has restarted, what happens to those containers? Those should come up automatically and they should join the cluster once again, once the restart is complete. So uh, what we have now is like, we have uh, about 500 bare metal machines where we are spinning uh, containers out of it. Right now we are not using any orchestrator, like orchestrator, like, Kubernetes, Swarm, we are not using as of now. I will tell the reason why we are not using them. Uh, we are spinning containers are uh, using our homegrown solution, and we are managing those containers. We are using uh, uh, overlay networks now, provided by Docker for our multi-host net uh, networking. And we are using a private registry, which basically maintain our images, and we pull those uh, on demand whenever there is a new uh, image, we, we use those registry. And we are using local storage for data. So uh, uh, this local storage helps us to have a, a very good IO uh, for our, like uh, most of the Hadoop jobs are IO intensive. So local, having local storage on the host machines really help it. How, how do my clusters look like? Uh, so on a bare metal machines, there will be multiple containers. And uh, in our current, uh, in this offering, it's shared infrastructure. 
with our users. Like uh, 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 from a single machine, you will have containers for multiple clusters belonging to different clusters. So we have problem of like network isolation. It should not be like uh, a, a, a person A is able to hamper with the person B's cluster. So uh, we we are uh, uh, we need to be bothered about this. We uh, are con we have various like uh, uh, first we had a very big monolithic app which had everything inside it, like it had the LDAP server, it had a KMS server for encryption, it had uh, various monitoring related tools inside it, and uh, uh, and like and Hadoop related services were also bundled in one single image. But we started breaking down step by step. We first we took out uh, LDAP out as a separate container. We took out KMS for our, uh, uh, as a separate container. We took out MySQL out for our metadata uh, as a separate container. We separated out uh, our master and data node containers, and we had a long list of images which we are now using for uh, uh, creating a cluster. And this really helps us in a way if we want to change, uh, let's say, uh, MySQL version or KMS version, uh, so we don't have to be, uh, uh, do much code change or the uh, our other images are not impacted. So for networking, uh, we are using overlay network. We are using a driver called as Weave. Uh, Docker provides various drivers for networking. Uh, Weave has really helped us, uh, and uh, we have done very comparative studies for performance. And overlay network overall provide, gives you 60% of your network performance, which is very slow, we know, as of now. We are working with the latest technologies like Docker 1.12 is providing for Mac VLAN and IP VLAN. We hope to improve uh, that and have a better performance around like three to five percent degradation is fine, but not uh, the forty percent degradation from the uh, our and uh, like uh, our base network. So we also make use of something called as port forwarding, and uh, uh, like I, as I said, we have three kinds of network. One is a private network, one is a public network, and we have a management network available. For public network, we use uh, port forwarding, like uh, requests are coming from, uh, let's say, on a port 8080 to log into our Ambari server. Uh, this will be rerouted from the uh, public interface of the host machine to the uh, container using port forwarding feature. For private network, we rely on the network created by the overlay networks. And, uh, and basically, all ports are open on a private network, and uh, uh, services and uh, containers uh, can work on those private network easily. Uh, uh, this diagram will help you understand better the networking, how we have done it. Uh, so uh, so uh, we, uh, A, B, and C are our clusters. We spread across various host machines. And uh, basically, uh, we have some containers or uh, nodes on a one host and same cluster will be spread, uh, spread across. And here I, I will bring on point like why we are not making use of uh, orchestrators uh, available in the market. Uh, first reason being they are not providing me a control over CPU set. So I, I, uh, we, we provide exact CPU sets like CPU number zero, two, four, six should go to container a in host one, and one, three, five, seven should go to a, a container B of cluster B uh, on host one. B, uh, this is to avoid the noisy neighbor issues. Uh, let's say even a, uh, one uh, particular customer is running high loads of CPU intensive work, it should not impact my uh, cluster B. Uh, so these, these are missing as of now in the orchestrator. We have been talking to Google for Kubernetes and Swarm from Docker team to provide those capabilities, like have CPU sets, then we can make use of those orchestrators. Another reason being uh, we are not making use of that is like they don't support as a disk, a local disk as the uh, first class entity. And we want our data to be uh, 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 written on local disks and in order, and uh, some people might say that may have issues uh, because if the host machine crashes, what will happen to the data? So uh, to overcome that, we are making use of Hadoop's uh, built-in redundancy and replication. 
let's say uh, we, we spread our, uh, like how we spread our nodes is like uh, data nodes of a particular cluster should spread across machines like a, a host one, host two, and host three. If I, I have a three node cluster, it should spread out across the host machines. And even if host one crashes or the disk on the one of the data node crashes, uh, Hadoop can replicate and uh, redundancy will come in from the uh, data node which is on the host two or host three. So uh, that way we are able to recover data even if there is a, a full crash of the host machine or a crash of the data disk. So, uh, how, how, how uh, like, what are the technologies involved in our cluster creation? I, I will take you through. So, basically, when we have submitted that request previously, that goes to uh, something called uh, our uh, application layer, REST layer, and uh, it API gateway uh, then takes that request, and then it goes to our deployment layer, which basically creates those clusters. And they, in the deployment layer, we, it's the where we start the Docker containers, we mount the various volumes, we do the port forwarding, we do uh, IP assigning for that uh, particular containers, we give host names, and we, get, uh, we assign network to the containers. Uh, so what are the phases involved when we have to uh, like create this? So we, we first, we, what we do is we have pre-ordered machines, like we are, uh, uh, our provider gives us, allocates some machines for us, and we just take the machines and it is available instantly for us, uh, uh, those machines, and we uh, prepare them and then start the, our orchestrator cycle, which is like to create the clusters and, 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 and have them ready for our customers. So uh, when, when request comes to our API gateway, uh, it has to do a lot of stuff. It has to assign resources, like, I have re received a, a request, let's say, of four nodes. I have to now distribute those four nodes out of my pool. Uh, where are those go four nodes going to sit on? Uh, that's one job of our API gateway. Uh, then it decides on the what all IPs uh, it's uh, going to consume. And, uh, it, and then it prepares the layout for the cluster. Let's say if we have a four node cluster, what all services are going to run on node A, node B, and node C. So that prepares our config. When this is done, we uh, give the request to our deployer agent. Deployer agent is something like a bunch of scripts for us, which are uh, sitting on each host machine. And what those scripts do is, like they uh, take the request, they see what they are, uh, need to do. So we pass them in a JSON format. Okay, you need to do this stuff. In this description, they have, they have to start the container. They have to mount these particular volumes, and uh, uh, and they get to know what all IPs to assign. They also get to know uh, like what scripts inside to run. So once those containers are started, uh, they need to join them together uh, to our uh, what we call it the Ambari server, which is the uh, guiding for our cluster installation. And uh, once the nodes are ready on, uh, cl basically containers are started on each of those machines uh, and they are ready to for the cluster creation, we start the cluster installation. So uh, how, how this imaging helping us is now is, when cluster installation starts, it tries to do, let's say yum install Hadoop. It says it's already there, it skips that. Uh, then it's, it's try to do yum install Hive and other services. So it's already there in the images, so it starts skipping those. And uh, let's say even if in case of database, it says I want to prepare my metadata database, it says it's already there. You just need to fill your configs. So that's how we are able to do it faster. Because in image we have everything pre-installed and we are just configuring them at the runtime during the request. And uh, so uh, th that's how it's really fast uh, cluster creation we are able to get within minutes. So I'll, I'll, I'll now uh, see if that cluster was ready. Let me just refresh it. Yeah, uh, so it's active now. So we'll, we'll take you to this cluster. So this is a Ambari uh, page uh, for IOP, which is the landing page for a cluster. And I'll log into this cluster. Yeah. 
So you can see all the services which I have chosen al along with the Spark is there in this cluster. And basically this now cluster is ready for any kind of deployment which I want to do uh, as a data scientist or as a user of Hadoop related clusters. Any questions as of now? Okay. So to uh, summarize my discussion, like what we are able to achieve using containers, create clusters very fast. Uh, cluster creation time is like 90 seconds, and it takes about two minutes or three minutes to start it. And we are able to create clusters reliably and repeatably. Like every time we request, uh, it comes up because there is no environment dependencies involved now. Uh, and it's like fully managed any service going down or any service uh, uh, like if it is the, there is some problem in the host machine if the host machine restarts we bring those containers up automatically and they join the cluster back and if there are any disk issues uh, that is being managed by us uh, it's highly secure we have added lot many stuff apart from the uh, like containers or the monitoring tools we have various uh, uh, like what we call as itcs guidelines we need to like stop the root uh, ssh we need to stop uh, uh, various service system from accessing it so all the security bunch uh, as a enterprise ready cluster has gone into those images and uh, we have very uh, good mechanism for patching mainly because of uh, uh, being docker containers what we need to do is like uh, if there is a upgrade required in our binary we prepare new image uh, in dev time test it once it is ready for deployment we uh, push those images on host machines where the clusters are already running and during the patch window we just bring the old uh, old uh, uh, running containers down and start the new containers with the new image and the patch is done so that's all which we need to do during the patch window. And basically, uh, we are able to do that because all of our data is externalized. Uh, that really helped us uh, do the patching uh, really fast. And uh, we are able to use, make use of resources well as we are uh, sharing the, uh, uh, like, our host machines with various uh, containers and we are cl clusters are, are uh, uh, like shared infrastructure because of the shared infrastructure uh, the resources are, are being used very well and it's being cost effective this offering is currently in beta now till october post october it will be charged as like uh, as less as one dollar per node so anybody who is interested will get very uh, good, uh, reliable Hadoop clusters in at very low cost. And uh, so this is a offering landing page. If you are interested, you can log into the Bluemix and have uh, make use of this offering, which provides various services as of now. And we are improving on adding value adds to this. Value adds will be text analytics you will be able to do and run uh, big SQL queries. And if you are interested more, uh, you can log in to uh, Bluemix to look more. Uh, what are the other services available? Uh, uh, what are the uh, various uh, uh, integrations available around Hadoop cluster? Hadoop is the uh, landing zone. There are other services which you can make use and have an end-to-end -end application ready. And if you are interested in big insights on cloud, you can have uh, various demos uh, which are available on YouTube, and you, you may want to try tutorials to how to use this cluster which we created further to do uh, various analytics. Thank you. So I'm open for questions now, if you have any questions. So this agenda talk, yeah. yeah. Right, right. So that all we are managing because, uh, as I said, uh, the orchestrators which are available are not providing me that fine grained control over hard drives, even on CPU sets. So uh, I talked about my resource manager layer uh, during in the API gateway. 
that's the job of the uh, resource manager layer to decide uh, on this host what hard drive it is going to use, uh, what CPU set it is going to use for that container. We do plan to open source that code if somebody is looking for similar code because orchestrators are not providing uh, that fine grained control. Uh, I'm rather, uh, yesterday I discussed the same issue with the Docker team. They are pushing me to uh, like add that capability to Docker Swarm. So we, we, we may see Docker Swarm having that capability very soon. Any questions? Uh, it's IOP as of now, which is based on HDP, Hadoop Data Platform, uh, Horton, uh, provided by Hortonworks. It's like now IBM and uh, Hortonworks had a uh, uh, consortium where they are providing uh, IOP as an open data platform. And we do uh, plan to support uh, various flavors of IOP with services being added to IOP as plans, like uh, value adds will be another plan. And we may have other integrations also along with IOP for SPSS to have more in, uh, analytics building. On, on your landing page, you showed a menu for IOP yeah. other stuff. Yeah, so what, we what plan. Other, uh, other things are like uh, value adds uh, for text analytics, okay. uh, Big SQL, and uh, we will have soon something called Zeppelin coming in and other, uh, whatever like uh, Apache will recommend to add, uh, we'll add those uh, projects. Okay. Yeah, so we are not uh, like limiting networking as of now, but we do plan to like have bandwidths for the containers. Uh, like this container should not consume uh, more than uh, let's say 20% of the bandwidth, but that is not there as of now. Uh, that we limit, like uh, we uh, basically mount uh, partitions out of a particular disk only, like let's say our host machines have 12 disks and we can spawn 12 containers on it. We will give partitions from a disk one to one container and partitions from uh, disk two or to another container. So uh, that way we are uh, managing uh, on its our own, own, like our code manages that. Okay. Uh, do you mount like six volumes? Yeah, yeah. We mount six volumes to the container. In UI, you, you have the option where the user creates 20 gigs for the data nodes. Uh, that will be, a number of nodes will be increased. Like uh, if if like user uh, provides, let's say, uh, uh, if you want five data nodes, and it will be spread across various disks, and each data node as of now has one disk only, but that disk size varies. Yeah, yeah, so our, like, uh, come again? Are you using LVM to basically uh, use the entire space as one container, or? No, 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 we, uh, like, all the disks are partitioned separately, and each disk is, like, two TB each, and during the Docker run, we mount those disks, uh, like, how much user has requested, like, the user has requested for two TB per node, and two TB disk is mounted on to that uh, uh, container. Okay, so if the drive is two terabytes and the customer only wants data not of 200 gigs, you basically waste? Uh, yeah, that, like we, uh, uh, we, we, that we have some partitions also within the disk and we'll mount, uh, give that, that 200 uh, gig partition only. 
Like, so let's, if a customer has requested 400 gig, so we'll partition the uh, disk of 2 TB to 400 gigs and mount that partition, not the entire disk. Uh, yes, that as of now, this yes, but that depends upon the like our resource manager layer is intel intelligent. He will not schedule that container on the host machine which has two terabyte disks. Yeah. If you have more questions, we can take offline. Yeah, sure. I would really love to answer your questions. Any questions? Okay, thank you.